If you have been selected to receive this video today, it signifies that you have been entrusted with vital information by your guardian angels. You played a crucial role in saving this individual's life, as they were in a perilous situation. The angels emphasized that you rescued them from a dangerous predicament. The person in question was trapped in a toxic relationship, whether it be with a romantic partner, a friend, or a business-slash-professional association. Their well-being was entirely intertwined with that of the harmful individual or entity they were involved with. This toxic presence sought to dismantle their spirit, filling their mind with negativity and feeding them lies. Initially, this person or group may have appeared honest and sincere, but in reality, they do not have the best interests of the individual at heart. They are dishonest and deceitful, and their true intention is to cause harm. A deceptive agreement was made to poison the innocent person, under the guise of fairness and trustworthiness. Unfortunately, they fell victim to this trickery. These individuals are present to steal away your friend or follower, and their ultimate goal is to deceive them. They will not hesitate to exploit them for money, job promotions, safety, shelter, love, friendship, connections, or any other enticing opportunity. The game they are playing is filled with hidden twists and turns. I reiterate, it was you who saved this person's life, and they are eager to disclose how you rescued them from a dangerous situation. Your kindness and grace enabled them to escape from harm. Remember the times when you sat down with someone and engaged in a heartfelt conversation. Your natural empathy and care for others are truly remarkable. Your purpose in nature may guide you towards becoming an angelic counselor or healer. This may not be a new experience for you, but have you ever had a conversation or chance encounter where you deepened your compassion and offered help to someone? Throughout this time, the person you invest your love and wisdom in recognizes the dedication you have towards them on a profound level. This is not something they are accustomed to, and it is truly a remarkable thing. The energy and care you provide are akin to that of a human angel. You exhibit complete independence in your level of care, respect, and love. The way you demonstrate devotional love and agape love for everyone is truly extraordinary. This person's life has undoubtedly changed for the better because you did not place any limitations on them. You are not selfish, proud, or self-centered. You do not prioritize your own time or seek personal gain. Your actions are not driven by selfishness, and you harbor no false or hidden intentions. Your thoughts and interactions are genuine and selfless. You are kind, unselfish, and fearlessly compassionate. You do not judge others based on their gender, skin color, nationality, or race. You pay no attention to external factors such as their appearance or sexuality. High resolution or superficial judgments are not a part of your discovery or purpose. You have transformed into a human angel because you possess a deep love for others. You believe that this person needs good advice, and you offer your support without hesitation. You have the time and energy to assist them, and you willingly do so. Your presence is a blessing to this person, especially when they are faced with threats from the forces of darkness. These attacks may target their possessions and the people in their lives who do not align with their purpose or vibration. They did not live by their superiority or their spirit. At their core, they are primitive and evil in their behavior and attitudes. However, this person is a fool who was tricked. Blessed are those who took advantage of the path of the angel, for they were beaten. Regardless of your spiritual or religious beliefs, words or spells, we all have the ability to connect with others through our words, intentions, and thoughts. These have a magical quality as they travel and affect people. Our words, thoughts, and intentions have an impact on everything around us. 
This person was completely blinded, like a blind man walking a dark road filled with knives and deadly traps. The ground beneath them is full of intentionally dug pits that cause harm and evil. Troublemakers were sent to stir up trouble. This person is in a truly horrible situation, where enemies wear masks while friends surround them. Enemies manipulate supporters or allies to go against them. This has been happening for a while, but no one had the courage or dedication to stop it. Do you know how powerful moments of true selflessness combined with incredible emotions are? Perhaps it is love. You may have already recognized this instinctively, which is why you stopped helping. However, at the highest level, a person who acts unselfishly to help their fellow man or a brother, whether they are family or not, is like an archangel in many ways. Most of us choose not to be blind or fall into ignorance and hatred. To deny or divide. You, on the other hand, are not in denial. You will not submit to ignorance or the black coat of despair. Deception, your mind remains active to eliminate deceit, the sacred and divine gift of understanding, you possess an extraordinary nature, deserving the utmost in life, including the best healing, abundance, and love, to attain such blessings, it is crucial to acknowledge, that you offer the best of yourself, providing wise counsel, divine guidance, and selfless actions with integrity, there is nothing amiss with you, at least not in this particular circumstance, redirect your focus to your heart sanctuary, and instead of delving into your inner self, reminisce about the past, when you stood as a courageous warrior, blooming with self-assurance, do you recall the impact of your words? Take a moment to reflect upon the advice you have given, and how frequently it has been shared, as a conduit, you have contributed to a transformation, in this individual's life, altering their path from darkness and despair, they may not be aware of it, but they reside in spiritual obscurity, you have saved their existence, even if they may not express it directly, they may lack financial means, but they will convey their gratitude. Here comes the message, Father is talking about, and after that, a prayer and some divine wisdom to save yourself from any unforeseen event. My friends, have you ever found yourself asking, why is life so difficult, or where is God in the midst of my pain? In the midst of my struggle, these questions are not just rhetorical. They linger in our minds and hearts as we earnestly search for answers that often elude us. Life can sometimes feel like a battlefield where our struggles seem to overwhelm us. But let's remember what the Apostle Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 4, verses 8 to 9. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. With this promise from God's word as our foundation, today, I want us to explore the undeniable reality that struggles are an integral part of our human experience. But God is as real as those challenges. When we say God is as real, we mean that his presence, love, and power are not abstract concepts, but tangible truths that we can experience in our lives. Just as we can feel the weight of our struggles, we can also feel the weight of God's glory, lifting us out of those very challenges. So we will look deeply into biblical truths that assure us of God's unwavering presence and guidance, especially in the face of adversity. I am also going to pray a powerful prayer with you in the mighty name of Jesus. So watch until the end and open your hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer. My friends, let us explore a subject that touches the core of our human experience. The struggles that challenge our faith, test our resilience, and often leave us questioning the very essence of our existence. Yet, let us not forget that struggles, as perplexing as they may seem, are also the catalysts that shape our character, refine our faith, and bring us into a closer relationship with God. He does not promise a life without trials but he assures us of his unwavering presence through each storm we face. How profoundly reassuring it is to know that we are not alone, 
even when it feels like the ground beneath us is shifting. The pages of the Bible, a timeless treasure of wisdom and guidance, offer us vivid accounts of men and women who faced unimaginable trials and yet emerged stronger in their faith. These biblical heroes, ranging from Joshua conquering Jericho amid uncertainty, to Paul finding strength and weakness, are not just figures of the past. Their stories are alive, speaking to each of us in our present struggles, reminding us that we too can overcome. So, let's embark on this journey. Fortified by the powerful words of Romans 8 verse 18, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Here, Paul reminds us that the trials we face now are utterly insignificant compared to the glorious and majestic future that awaits us. So, let us embark on this spiritual journey today, taking heart in the knowledge that God walks beside us, even through the valleys of our deepest struggles. Together, we'll explore seven aspects of life's struggles and discover how God's Word provides us the strength, wisdom, and courage to endure and even triumph. With that said, let's delve into our first point. Number one, the struggle with uncertainty and doubt. The struggle that we often face with uncertainty and doubt is as old as humanity itself. We've all experienced that unsettling feeling where the path ahead seems foggy and uncertain. Even heroes of faith, like Joshua, had their moments of doubt and uncertainty. When the Israelites stood before the walls of Jericho, the task seemed impossible. Yet, Joshua clung to the promise in the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 9, which says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua's faith in God's guidance steered him through uncertain times, leading to the miraculous fall of Jericho's walls. So what can we learn from Joshua's experience? The key is to remain rooted in God's promises when facing uncertainty and doubt. Even when the walls in our lives seem impenetrable, we can trust that God will bring them down in His perfect timing. It's important to clarify that doubt is not a badge of honor in our walk of faith. Indeed, Scripture warns that doubt can hinder us from receiving God's promises. Yet, yeah. there are moments when, like the desperate father in Mark 9 verse 24, we find ourselves torn between belief and unbelief. In such times, our immediate prayer should echo the words of that desperate father. He said, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. This is not a surrender to doubt, but a candid admission of our need for God to strengthen our wavering faith. In uncertainty and doubt, it's easy to become overwhelmed by the what-ifs and the worst-case scenarios that our minds create. However, be reminded that God doesn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So when doubt begins to settle in, let us lean into God's promises, remembering that He has been faithful in the past and will be faithful in the future, just as the walls of Jericho fell by God's power. The walls of our doubt and uncertainty will crumble when we place our trust in Him. Number two, the struggle, suffering, and sickness. Life often confronts us with suffering and sickness, challenges that test not just our physical endurance, but also our spiritual faith. These moments can be daunting, yet they offer two profound lessons about God's grace and His power to deliver us. On one hand, we find the story of the Apostle Paul and his thorn in the flesh, as discussed in 2 Corinthians 12 verses 7 to 9. Despite his earnest prayers for relief, God's answer was this, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Paul's experience teaches us that sometimes our suffering is a conduit for God's grace, revealing that his strength is made perfect in our weakness. It reminds us that even when it seems like the thorn won't be removed, God's grace is sufficient to see us through. We may not fully understand the why behind suffering or sickness, but we can rely on the who. Our God, who is steadfast in his love and grace towards us. Also, remember Job, who despite losing everything, clung to his faith in God. His story reminds us that God is still in control, even when life feels chaotic and unfair, as we grapple with suffering 
Let's find solace in the knowledge that God's grace is sufficient for us in every situation. However, this is not where God's intervention ends. His power is also profoundly manifest in healing and deliverance. Think about the numerous instances in the Gospels where Jesus healed every sickness and disease among the people. One example is the woman with the issue of blood in Matthew 9, verses 20 to 22. She had suffered for 12 long years, but the moment she touched the hem of Jesus' garment, she was healed instantly. Her faith made her whole. This shows us that God's desire is not just to sustain us in our suffering, but also to deliver us from it. So, whether you are enduring chronic suffering or facing a dire health diagnosis, take heart. God's grace is either sufficient to sustain you in it, or His power is mighty to deliver you from it. In either scenario, God is still God, compassionate, loving, and capable of handling whatever ails you. Trust that He will guide you through your struggle with suffering and sickness, whether by offering His sustaining grace or through miraculous healing. Number three, struggle with lack and scarcity. Another form of struggle we often encounter is the fight against lack and scarcity, be it financial hardship, lack of opportunities, absence of favor, or whatever the situation may be. Consider the widow of Zarephath in 1 Kings 17 verses 8 to 16. She was at her wit's end, preparing her last meal before resigning herself and her son to die. Then comes Elijah, asking her for water and a piece of bread. Despite her lack, she trusts God's word through Elijah and is miraculously provided for. My friends, this is a vivid reminder that God is our ultimate provider, especially when we face lack in various aspects of life. It may seem like we are stretching our last jar of oil or a handful of flour, but God assures us that his resources are limitless. When the widow took a step of faith, God multiplied her resources. Similarly, when we trust in God's provision, even in times of lack, we open the door for him to perform miracles in our lives. The world teaches us to measure our worth by what we have, but God looks at what we give. A heart of generosity, even amidst lack, is fertile ground for God's blessings. As we face financial hardships, lack of opportunities, or even lack of favor, let's put our faith in God, who promises to supply all our needs according to his riches and glory. He turns our lack into abundance, our scarcity into plenty. Number four, the struggle with worry and fear. We live in a world that often feels like a breeding ground for worry and fear. Whether it's health concerns, job security, or the state of the world, there's always something that could trigger our anxieties. The story of Martha in Luke 10 verses 38 to 42 offers an insight into this struggle. Martha was anxious and troubled about many things, yet Jesus told her, that only one thing was needed, and Mary had chosen that better part, by sitting at the feet of Jesus. In our own lives, the overwhelming noise of worries and fears can drown out God's voice. We get so entangled in the web of what-ifs that we forget to sit at the feet of Jesus. But my friends, when worry tries to overtake us, we can find comfort in Philippians 4 verse 6, which advises us not to be anxious about anything, but to present our requests to God through prayer and thanksgiving. This doesn't mean that our problems will magically disappear, but it does mean that we can experience a peace that transcends understanding. So how do we combat worry and fear? We can do so by grounding ourselves in the promises of God. When the winds of worry start to blow, let's anchor ourselves in God's word, just like Martha needed to sit at the feet of Jesus to find her peace. We too need to pause and realign ourselves with God. Remember, worry adds no hours to our day or days to our life. It only robs us of the joy and peace that God wants us to experience. Number five, the struggle with rejection. Rejection cuts deep, affecting our sense of worth and belonging. It's a form of struggle that most of us have encountered, often leaving scars on our hearts. The story of Hagar in Genesis 21 verses 8 to 20 presents a lesson of rejection. Hagar was cast out and left to wander in the barren wilderness with her son Ishmael. Despite the bleak circumstances, God's voice broke through saying, Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. My friends, 
This is a powerful reminder that even when the world turns its back on us, God is still there. He hears our cries and understands our pain. Rejection is merely a redirection in disguise, an opportunity for God to guide us towards something greater. Sometimes we cling to people or things that God wants us to release, and at times it takes a painful experience of rejection to usher us into a new season. When rejection haunts us, it's crucial to ground ourselves in God's acceptance. Romans 8 verse 30 tells us that nothing can separate us from the love of God. When we are rejected by the world, let's turn our focus to God, who accepts us unconditionally. Let's replace the hurtful words and actions of people with the everlasting promises of God. He turns our rejection into a pathway for something greater, something beyond our understanding. Number six, struggle with loneliness. Loneliness is a silent epidemic, affecting many regardless of age or social status. Even the prophet Elijah faced this struggle. After his victory against the prophets of Baal, he found himself alone and dejected, as described in 1 Kings 19, verse 10. Despite his accomplishments, Elijah felt isolated and sought death. But God reminded him that he was not alone. Similarly, my friends, you are never alone. You have heard us say this in our daily Jesus devotional videos so many times. You are never alone. Even when you feel isolated, cut off from friends or family, remember God is still there with you. He fills the empty spaces in our hearts and lives. In moments of loneliness, God offers us an opportunity to deepen our relationship with Him. Sometimes solitude is a hidden blessing, offering us time to reflect, pray, and draw nearer to God. When you are surrounded by loneliness, take a moment to remember the heroes of faith who also faced isolation, like Elijah, like Paul in prison, or even Jesus in the wilderness. They found strength in their relationship with God. Our society may glorify busyness and social connections, but it's in the quiet moments that God often speaks the loudest. Through loneliness, we can cultivate a deeper intimacy with God, learning to find companionship and fulfillment in Him. And number seven, the struggle with broken relationships. My friends, we can't overlook the struggle with broken relationships. Whether it's family feuds, lost friendships, or failed intimate relationships, the pain is real. Depending on the situation, broken relationships can leave us feeling so heartbroken that it may seem as though we're mourning the loss of a loved one. Yet, even in these emotionally wrenching times, we can find solace in the unbreakable relationship we have with God, who is always ready to mend our broken hearts and restore our spirits. The parable of the prodigal son in Luke 15 verse 20 gives us a glimpse into how God views broken relationships. The father sees his son from a distance and without a second thought, runs to him, embracing him in a hug of unconditional love and forgiveness. My friends, broken relationships, offer us the chance to exhibit the grace that God extends to us. God's arms are always open wide, eager to forgive and restore us. We are called to do the same for those who have hurt us or whom we have hurt. Relationships can be complex, filled with ups and downs, but the grace we receive is the grace we should extend to others. Remember, our ability to mend a broken relationship often starts with taking a step of humility. As Ephesians 4, verse 32 tells us, Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. And we know that this is often easier said than done. At times, it can be a difficult task, but it's necessary. It leads to healing and wholeness, not just for ourselves, but also for those with whom we reconcile. Now, these are just some of the struggles we face, but in each one, remember, you are not alone. God walks with us, comforting, guiding, and providing for us. Every step of the way, our struggles are an invitation to experience God's power in new and transformative ways. Let us take these words of Psalm 55, verse 22, to heart. Cast your cares on the Lord, and He will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. And remember, the struggle is real. But so is God. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me. 
so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and merciful God. Heavenly Father, creator of heaven and earth, I praise your holy name above all else. You are the beginning and the end, the first and the last, and your glory fills the heavens and the earth. Father, I come before you humbly, acknowledging my sins and shortcomings. I ask for your forgiveness, as I also forgive others who have wronged me. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke the spirit of uncertainty and doubt that may try to cloud my vision. Lord, as I put my trust in you, help my unbelief. I declare that I will be strong and courageous, O Lord, because you are with me wherever I go. Father, I stand against all forms of suffering that try to cripple my spirit. In the name of Jesus, I declare healing over my life, over my body, and over my soul. I shall live to declare the works of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask for your divine intervention in areas where I experience lack, financial struggles, lack of favor, and all forms of deficiency. In the name of Jesus, I declare an increase and an overflow of your abundant blessings in my life. I rebuke the spirit of worry, fear, and every negative emotion that tries to disturb my peace in the name of Jesus. Father, may my heart be anchored in your perfect love, which casts out all fear. Lord, may you turn any rejection that I may face into a redirection. Father, I ask that you fill the void in my life where loneliness tries to dwell. I am grateful that you promised to never leave me, and I am never alone. Father God, your love transcends all forms of human loss and brokenness. I pray that you restore my broken relationships and heal my heart from all the wounds of trauma and loss. Lord, as I say this prayer together with everyone listening, I thank you for every heart that is humble before you right now. Lord, as some of us wrestle with different struggles, may you provide divine deliverance to each of us. Father, we ask that you give us hope in the midst of despair and discouragement. Lord, may your hand of protection be upon us and our loved ones, that we may all come to experience your amazing grace and everlasting love. Father, we are grateful that no matter what struggle we may face, you are in control and you're still with us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare victory over all negative circumstances. We declare that everything is working for us and not against us. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, amen. If you were blessed by this message, type the word amen in the comment section below. I declare that all the blessings of this prayer are now upon you. In the name of Jesus, you can help us to reach more persons and spread the gospel. You can do this by sharing the video with a friend or family member who you know needs the blessing of this prayer and by clicking the like button. Also remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos that will bless your heart and uplift your spirit. We appreciate all those who support us. You're blessed to be a blessing. Now, for those who are listening, and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I urge you to receive God's grace with an open and repentant heart. Start where you are. Your past doesn't matter. Jesus came to seek and to save those that are lost. God loves you. It is not God's will that anyone should perish, but for all to come to repentance. Say this simple salvation prayer for yourself. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, hear my prayer, I pray. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Now that you have prayed this prayer, you can ask a pastor to baptize you at a local church and make that decision public. Baptism is a symbol of that decision to follow Jesus. I then encourage you to have fellowship with other believers, to learn more about your new life, and to get to know more about God.
please feel free to leave your prayer request in the comments section so that we can present them before God for your blessings and victory. Also, we invite other believers on the YouTube platform and all over the world to join us and start praying for you right now. And we want you to know that even if you don't see a reply to your prayer request, it doesn't mean that you were not prayed for. Rest assured that we are actively lifting up each request to God that is in accordance with His will. We believe in the power of prayer to bring comfort, healing, and guidance in accordance with God's perfect plan. To God be all the glory. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Curious to discover more life-changing insights like these? Then dive right into our next video. It's a journey you won't want to miss. Click on the video and let's keep the universal's wisdom flowing.